Hi Angela, uh, I know you got this file working, um, but I wanted to make this and, and see if maybe it helps get you uh, importing okay from uh, Corel. Because when you save it as a DXF, uh, you get a vector file and that's, you know, you can't, if you go to a BMP or a JP, JPEG or anything else, it, then it's a raster image that Design Edge has to vectorize. And so you just add another step. Uh, you, you go from vector to raster back to vector. And uh, every time you change, you lose or alter your detail. So this looks good. The first thing I notice right away when I open this file uh, is that it's blue. So that tells me it's a cut path. So when it was imported into your um, design edge uh, using the import, uh, the first thing you want to do anytime you're handling DXF files, uh, or for me any other, is to make sure import as cut paths is not checked. Unless you've already got a file uh, that's a DXF uh, and, and has never been in Design Edge before, uh, for instance, like from, a nest, from my nesting software, it outputs a DXF that I need to import as a cut path because it already has lead-ins and lead-outs and, and everything, but that's very uncommon. So import as cut path should always be unchecked. Personally, when I'm importing something from uh, another uh, software or piece that I'm not sure of, I do not check link segments. And I also have some settings that I'll tell you about um, in, the, uh, in the linking piece that, uh, that matters. But make sure those, both of those boxes are unchecked. Groups doesn't really matter, and 3D is only, I think, if you, uh, if you have the 3D upgrade and use that for a router. So make sure those boxes are unchecked, and that may help part of the problem. Uh, in the settings, um, you need to... In your design settings, when I'm using Design Edge, I set it down here in link paths uh, the gap to jump and delete overlapping to zero because those can create some some crazy things that you don't want. Uh, and if you've already gone to the trouble to draw a vector file in Corel, then you've already handled this and it's not an issue. So if those have a values, even if it's a very small one, uh, let's say that was point triple oh one. Okay, uh, any file that was over or any vector that was overlapping, it would delete, and I'm not sure how it picks which one or why. Uh, a gap to jump. Uh, sometimes I put a number in here and use it temporarily, but I always go back and put it back to zero because when I'm linking stuff together, I only want it to link things that I've directly and intentionally connected. If it jumps then again it it will jump a gap and hook some nodes together and they may not be what you want um, as far as these I use a hundred unless I'm doing a, a, a very small or detailed piece for the laser and it gets small uh, and then this is a factory default too um, so that's just the basics so looking at your at your piece when I hit D for detect intersections it's got a bunch of them and, and a lot of them are because if you look at the wide cut path I have turned on this is a pierce point so this really it's a cut path but it has no lead-in so it tells me that probably you imported your drawing that used to be welded and linked together as cut paths and design edge immediately said, oh, well, you want it to be a cut path, so here, I'll break it and put a pierce point in it for you. And I don't think that's what you wanted. So, first thing I'm going to do is control X, which you're probably familiar with, and explode that all and make it into open paths. And then I'm going, and that's just little segments. Every piece is a, is a segment. So, then I'll go back and hit J for join, and it will join up all of the pieces that are close enough together. Everything that's still white has a problem somewhere. So if I click on that outside path that has a problem, I can see that it's green everywhere except right up here at the top. And when I zoom in on that, uh, it's, a, it's a mess. So it, it didn't, uh, something didn't come in together. And if you had delete overlapping segments turned on and you imported this as a, as a fairly small uh, scale DXF, 
then it certainly could have made this mess for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to X, uh, extend these pieces oops, together. There we go. So that we can put this back together for you. And trim the ones that don't belong out. And I'm going to go ahead and see where that goes. I'm going to draw a line from this end point up here to on the path because this is very small and trim that off and then the J join that together so now I've cleaned up that little bit there uh, see this one it's not immediately obvious where the problem is so I'm going to use K to break it at a spot where I'm pretty sure it's not and I see it's right here at this corner because it's only green to that corner and if I zoom in again we have uh, a piece that is probably deleted in overlap or cleaned this up for you uh, and it's no longer a closed path so I'll trim that and clean it off hit J for link join it together and that's fixed this one didn't uh, either so I'll K break it right there uh, okay now there's my spot that shows up zooming in again this may have been because it you know where it converted it to a cut path it tried to put a lead in point somewhere there so I'll trim that up. So now you have back to your original drawing and you have zero intersections. So now this is ready for you to use uh, the settings that you want um, in your convert. Okay, so whatever your curve is, uh, if it's 035, 45 thousandths, whatever it is, and however much lead in you want, uh, and you want uh, those turned on, you don't want to delete any small holes. Uh, okay, so you can convert that to a cut path as it is. And I know you said I'm going to push this button and, and see if it has any errors. Okay, so it doesn't have any errors. And I'm going to turn uh, that off and I'm going to select it and hit D. And then there's now piles of intersections. And that's because it went down into these little tight spots uh, where you're, and has crossovers because those are probably not. Uh, oops. Um, they were, I've been switching my levels back and forth so let me go to make sure exclude crossovers is checked and that won't be so bad uh, in for new yes and we'll turn that back off okay so now there's only 234 but all of this file everything in here all these intersections a lot of these will cut but if you look at that if you have wide cut paths turned on uh, in your settings, uh, then uh, right here, then that's going to show you the curve that you have, which you have I, for me on a fine cut 12 gauge is what I cut most of, and that's 45 thousandths for me is what my curve measures at. So I can see quickly that the black here is what my piece is going to look like, and I really, I mean, it, it has to chop the edges of this off because the torch won't fit down in those little bitty teeny tiny spots. So this may be what you were talking about with plasma cam uh, about uh, changing the size of some things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that last cut path and I'm going to show you something that uh, you can use on your smaller drawings to see what it's going to look like. Because the plasma torch, I'm going to hit Q for draw a circle and I'm going to draw 0.045 which is the size of the kerf of the torch. And so if it comes in, it can't fit in that corner, and it can't fit in that corner, and it certainly can't fit in that corner. So if you want to see what it's going to do, then you can pick uh, your uh, fillet tool, uh, which is F. And what you want to do is to have the radius you want your fillet uh, is half of your kerf, so that the... Uh, it will be uh, adjusting these paths to what the actual torch is going to do. So you can you can do the math or you can do minus 0 0.045 and then I'll put a slash 2 for divided by 2 so that it goes from a 45,000 entire curve to the actual radius of that which is half of that. So 0 0.045 divided by 2 and hit enter. Now you can go in and click these corners and you can convert these to what it's going to look like. So it rounded all of those. Now that torch will fit down in there. 
and you click all of these corners where the inside of your torch has to go down into it and then you'll know just exactly what it's going to look like so you can't cut those things never going to get down in there if it goes down in it's still going to be cutting that wide okay here's another problem because it won't quite fit but I'm going to knock these others off because this is what the piece is going to look like I know you've drawn these pretty square pieces but that won't work it's not going to be able to get in there okay now that I hit escape and I'm going to draw that circle again for my torch well that's not going to fit through there okay so the, this is the kerf of the torch so it won't fit so I can hit B for brush 0.045 now I'm brushing the size of my uh, torch so if that torch comes through here okay I can choose to narrow that up a little okay now it'll fit okay and I can you can break either side of this and hit H for smooth and use a small number like 0 .002 and it'll smooth that right up hit escape and then J for joint so now it'll fit same thing over here B for my curve I can see it's not gonna fit okay, this is a big pretty stem so we're gonna try not to get into it so I'm just gonna kind of edge this off here now I'm drawing something that I can realistically make uh, if I wanted to do something else with that I could H.002 and there it's straight okay so you use your tools now back to my fillet F.045 slash 2 now I can go back to looking at these inside corners and I can see what my, my machine is actually capable of. The outside corners are fine, okay, because Q.045, there's my torch, can come along here and out here in the material and then it can turn and come down here and you can see after I filleted that now it fits in that corner and then it'll come out here sharp and it'll come down here and it now fits in that corner, goes on out, it can come out past out into this waste. Here's one corner I haven't done, and back to you seeing the problem. Now the torch can only go to here. If I use this to, can, to make a cut path, the design edge is going to delete the crossover that would have happened if it came all the way down to the end of this and looped over here and then went back out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take care of that for us, but it's going to say, hmm, well since the drawing went all the way in there, maybe, maybe they want me to stop here and scooch on in here and draw this little square line into it and then come back out and that'll create some intersections which aren't always bad but it will also make the uh, uh, this leaf won't look like that it's going to have a, a line jutting into it so f.045 slash 2 I'm just going to see now that's what it'll look like same way with this back here it's not going to be that deep okay this one we looked at it was just a little blip that's small enough I'm deleting that detail okay back to my fillet so I only look at these inside corners that one's fine so we make these things at okay, this one let's see I'm gonna do my brush at 0.045 and I'm gonna look at that okay there's no way I'm getting back in there to make that pretty thing it just can't happen so I mean you can do several things I would probably uh, just you know delete that uh, so what I would do is uh, I can draw my circle in drag it till it just touches and then I can trim that off and I can let it have that corner right there again and join that back so I'd fill it that manually kind of because it was too complex uh, by two this is going to jut these back again this is this is what we can produce uh, depending on on your kerf okay so if your kerf's a little smaller then you can do a little bit better these brush and fillet tools and then h002 to smooth it this is going to give us a lot better idea whoops F slash two you don't need to go twice as big as you need now, now I do not uh, when I do these I do not save uh, 
this um, as my file. If you make this thing a lot bigger, uh, then you know you, these things it'll fit down in a lot of these places that it's not going to at this size. But what we do here is we kind of round things off, and so you can get an actual drawing of what your piece is going to look like uh, compared to you know just a, a, a square sided uh, file. So this may or may not be something you want to do. Like I said, it's helpful for me because I want to know what it's going to look like and where I can get it to. And since you have Advanced Design Edge already, it has this tool uh, built into it. So you might as well be able to see what's, uh, what's going on. The same way with your letters. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, Q45. So it can come down in there close. So it's, we're not going to terribly distort them to see what they're really going to look like. 1045 slash 2, same situation, only have to worry about the inside corners. Some of that font's already a little helpful, but see this is going to be a, a dash like that. So I'm just I'm just gonna try to I'm trying to get the reason I'm continuing I know this is is you've already seen this now by now uh, is I want to uh, show you the difference that you're gonna see when you actually create this uh, cut path compared to you know what you had this does take a little bit of time but if you're used to going in and cleaning up cut paths or running it and looking at it and saying you know well wow that doesn't look anything like what I wanted it to look like, um, then this may be helpful. So, kind of fast, and this is drawn now exactly like it will look, okay, with that curve. So, when we say in for new cut path and hit right here and yes, now we have all of our cut paths drawn in. They're cutting exactly where it shows it, and if I hit F10, if I select it all and hit D for detect intersections, I have none. <clears throat> so maybe that'll help, maybe it won't, but that is uh, the way that I clean up uh, a DXF and prepare it for the size that I'm going to cut it. So hopefully it helps.